God, guns, gold, and tax cuts. We'll stand up and cheer for War Raw. Check out this week's War Raw podcast right now. It's available to download at iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, or wherever you listen to podcasts. War Raw. War Raw. The following is an America Matters media production. The views expressed do not necessarily represent those of the station or its advertisers, although we think they should. But that's the opinion of America Matters media. Welcome to What's the Story? My name is Janice Hermson, and I am your host. It is Tuesday, September 20th, 2022, and we are here today with, what's your name again? Ed Ed, Noel on this quagmire Tuesday. Not Steve, right? Not Steve. (laughs) Not (laughs) Not today. Not today. All right. Well, I knew your name. I just wanted to make sure you knew your name. So sometimes I have to double check. I know, that's for I know, certain. and it's been a tough, tough life for you these last few weeks. So, so it, I don't know, tough, but it's been mm, soul. Oh, soulful or soul? Soul, S O L E. Oh, <laughs> alone, right? I was it's like S O U L, and you're no, S-O-L-E. it's it's kind of been alone, right? I I mean, we did some backcountry camping and stuff, but. Yeah, it's a little scary. I'm kind of redefining myself I or attempting it. to. I get it. I understand that role. And today we have Joe Black with us, who is sitting in for Doug Ashby, who has some family stuff happening. So welcome, <laughs> Joe. Hello, hello. <laughs> wow. Joe is a soon-to-be, maybe, podcaster. We're working on it. We're yes. working on it, yeah. And and do you mind if I ask what that topic is going to be or you know, kind of give us a feel for where you're going to go with that? Yes, we're going to go in the direction of dialogue between opposing like positions. So very much could be in the political realm, very right or very left and trying to be a bridge between those two. Good luck. <laughs> what was that? That's what soccer fun. boppers or those rock 'em sock 'em robot kind of things? I have a very thick skull, so I can handle it. Nice. Yeah, it might be bald, but it's thick. Nice. Yeah. We dance around most of them here, right? I mean, every once in a while we're, you know, confrontational, but most often we try to be informational. Yeah, we do. We do. Edutainment. I right? like it. Yeah. I do. Hopefully yeah. that works into wisdom. Uh, well, you know, we don't have to be wise. We just have to be entertaining. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> right? It's, it's kind of a pipe dream to wish we were wise. Oh, I know. What can I say? So we are sponsored by some folks that you know, uh, Light Black Productions yes. and Susie Husner. You heard her song coming mm-hmm. in and uh, we're heard on... AmericaMatters.us, 93.7 FM in Northern Nevada. And of course, you can go to our What's the Story page and find us right there and listen live and watch as we um, hopefully um, educate, entertain, find different topics that maybe you have an interest in. And I will tell you that lately we have had so many folks contacting us to give us different things that they want to hear about and offer so to come refreshing, on the show. It right? Is. So great. refreshing. It's Keep great. those uh, ideas, thoughts coming. Yeah, and I do want to share my email address because somebody said that they emailed me and I didn't respond. So I want to make sure you have the right address. It's Janice J A N I C E at L R P What's the Story dot com. So just email there, and I promise you I will respond. And if we can have you on, we will. Like I said, getting lots of different topics um, that have been uh, suggested. And um, one thing that came through today, apparently, the and I want to make sure I don't forget to talk about this because I didn't put it on my list. Um, they are going to be having drag queen story time in the libraries. And apparently tomorrow in Spanish Springs, the... Uh, county will be there to have public comment about this. This is something that 
the libraries want to do. Uh, yeah, I know. I see your look on your odd. face, Joe. It, we think it's odd, too. And so uh, we really feel it's important to go <laughs> look at his face. So I like how you said drag. <laughs> I was thinking of like the Mustang with the big wheels no, in we're back. we're not drag racing. We are drag queening. And uh, apparently the library, for some reason, thinks that that's an appropriate thing to be doing. And so I think that everybody not just parents i think everybody should go at four o'clock tomorrow spanish springs library they will be taking public comment and hopefully they will listen to the public comment and the feelings of the parents well i feel like if the drag queens want to go go who cares you don't have to go if you don't like drag queens right well they're going to be reading to the kids oh i didn't get that part yeah they're oh. going to be reading to the kids no it's not about them just going oh it's, it's about them reading being the I ones think, reading to i the think kids. we need to send a correspondent to okay. film because this is so saturday night live material Absolutely. i can't even tell you i, I know this is ridiculously I, it's hilarious it's crazy but it's real and i think it was paul who I, I don't know. Lenore's out in the audience. Was it Paul that we talked to at the event? Yeah, she doesn't remember. Paul. Uh, Paul White. And I think it was he who went to the librarian, the chief librarian, and said, you know, hey, what, if we if you do this, can we also do like have somebody that's, you know, on a in a biblical space can they read and they were like, oh, no, we're not doing that. Well, I wonder if they're going to be dressed up like they're performing somewhere. They have been. They, yes, really? In the past, yes, oh. they have. Yeah. Do we know the origin of that? I I don't. Good I question, can Joe. Honestly, yeah. tell you that I don't. It just says drag queen story time. Um, the gal that put it together obviously had a had a particular um opinion because it was very negative, showing the you know the different things. So and, this is a county I, thing, right? Yeah, apparently it's a county yeah. thing. Apparently, okay. yeah. So I I don't get it. I don't know why you wouldn't just have somebody. You know, and if it happens to be somebody yeah. that's a drag queen, then so it's fine. It. I mean, I'm not objecting to the person. I'm objecting to that uh, narrative. It's being... like a drive-in movie. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean, what I, the I heck? Yeah, I don't understand why you would choose that as someone that you would want presenting to the children. Maybe they believe that's so. a draw. Uh, maybe that I mean, and I think those are the questions that need I mean, to be those asked. are the things that I'm finding when I hear like certainly people I'll say left of center say things that are like designed to make you like them. Right. But they're not their <laughs> the, their belief of what people believe is wrong. Right. Yeah. That they I mean, think right. That the bulk of the people want. are always wrong. Right? Yeah. No. All right. So, uh, yeah, it's an interesting thing, but I didn't want to forget to tell you about it. Drag Queen Story Time, 4 o'clock tomorrow, Spanish Springs Library, if you're in the northern Nevada area. Check it out. And I would be there because I think that they need to hear what people think and, and maybe get some of these questions answered. Why are we doing this? What is the reason for choosing those folks to be the ones that are there? To, I mean, other than we're in a very, very, very blue state. Yeah. Are they going to be explaining? why they're dressed up or yeah, how does, I, how's that all work? They just come in as if that's normal. And, you know, okay. so, and for them, I'm sure it is, Yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. So I, I guess those are the questions that need to be asked, but I wanted to make sure that I got that out there first thing. And um, hopefully you can be there. And now we have to take a little break, but we're going to be back with Ed Knoll, Joe Black, and I'm Janice Hermsen. Businesses, writers, check this out. Go to LRPNV.com to get your printing, publishing, and professional services today. Need a virtual office? A place to receive and forward your mail with professional address and suite number for your business? Someone to answer your telephones? Want to rent a conference room for only $15 an hour? What about that book you've been wanting to have printed? LRP Printing and Business Center can do it for you. And they have a professional assistant on site daily, Monday through Friday. Just call 775-356-1004. Need copies, business cards, invoices, books, booklets, or graphic design to help brand you or your business, just call 775-356-1004 or go to lrpmv.com. With a great selection of new and used books, you can get your printing done and a book to entertain you in your time off. And don't forget, you could have your business sponsoring the Bookhound Radio Show, just like Andrew Martoni, author of Little Man in the Map, does every week. Just go to lrpmv.com. That's lrpmv.com or call 775-356-1004. They'll provide solutions for your business and writing projects. 
At a proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years. We offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women. From all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes, our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs. Hard to fit? Hard to find? A proper fit footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. We make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right arch support and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of happy feet, where comfort and your feet meet. Slice the sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of subs way. Could be a smoking number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is your number one phase. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Slice the sandwiches, port of subs. Port of Subs is celebrating 50 years as your neighborhood sandwich shop. We're saying mahalo to our customers with a chance to win a dream vacation to Maui for four. Imagine spending a week lounging on sun-drenched beaches and falling asleep to the sound of rolling waves. Entering is easy. Visit portofsubs.com to enter to win Port of Subs' 50th anniversary getaway and join our Port Perks program for fun and delicious ways to earn extra entries. Aloha. No purchase necessary. Whatever your number you dream and love, Sandwiches, Wake up, the sun below. Got another road to sow. Let the fire feel the hope swelling up in the depths of my soul. Are you shy and don't want to talk on the air? Text us your questions or comments to 775 237 2266. Now back to the show. Welcome back. This is What's the Story. I'm Janice Hermson. I'm your host. And we are talking to Joe Black, who is our special guest co-host in place of Doug Ashby, who had to be with family. And then um, Ed Knoll, who's always here with me, except when he's out there hiking. Well, hopefully I'm getting some exercise, staying skinny. (laughs) Right? Yeah. No, yoga does that for you. Well, yoga does some of that for me, but right, you know, we all eat twice as much as we should. Oh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> right? I mean, right now is the perfect time to tighten the belt. I, I should have brought you your chocolate. Then you couldn't be talking about this. No, I just, you know, eat chocolate <laughs> instead of white rice. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Yeah, I just trade my oh, carbs. All right. All right. <laughs> Well, today is Constitution, or actually this week is Constitution Week. Saturday was Constitution Day, and I know that not everybody really pays too much attention to this. But I, um, You didn't see the Constitution Parade going on? I did not. I was actually kind of surprised because I think last year something was done for Constitution Day or week or whatever. So, um, but I think it's something that is so important and we just don't pay too much attention to it. You know, we talk about it. Oh, that's a breaking our constitutional right. Well, do you really get it? Do you really know what that means? Right. I mean, uh, which, which right is it? Where did that right come from? I just think that it's important to, to pay attention to it. This would be a great time for people to understand about quote, we, the people. Well, I think uh, it's a, it's a fundamental difference between left and right. People on the right believe it to be gospel. People on the left think it's, mm, eh, maybe, if the time works. That's what I think. <laughs> I'm waiting for a response, but I'm hearing well, none. <laughs> well, that's what I'm just saying. You're that's, just poking the bear. <laughs> I am a little bit because that's what I see, right? Oh, we just had this whole abortion thing, right? I mean, that's part of the Constitution now. Or is it? Oh, it's not. It's not. Right. Oh, we're not poking the bear enough. All right. Oh, uh, you're so, so funny. <laughs> And it's also National Voter Registration Day. Just chime in anytime you feel like it. It's National Voter Registration Day. So if you have not registered to vote, today's a great day to choose to do it. And I know that um, Connie, our cheesehead in Wisconsin, was going to join us. I don't know if she has or not. 
And um, I'll have to check out and see if I can. I noticed on the way in, I was asked if I wanted to sign up to register. Oh, to vote. Good. So there's Yay. a uh, individual with a clipboard outside the Reno Town Mall. Excellent. How about that? That's wonderful. It is. Yeah. Awesome. 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 And I will post, Connie, I know that, that you're there. I am not seeing you right at the moment, but I had warned you about that already. So um, I will post where you can go to check your registration because I know that you are registered, but that you wanted to check it out because Wisconsin had some funny things happening happening with their registration. So um, she's going to check that out and see what's going on there. So um, national, oh, our word of the day, quagmire. Yeah, it's a, good word. It's a great word. So you want to share? Or so did quagmire, you, did you do I, some synonyms for us? Since, so I yeah. hardly looked it up because I use it. Oh. I love it. Right. And my synonym would be President Trump is in a quagmire. Oh, right? that's interesting. So right to me, it's like, knee deep in quicksand and no limbs in reach right <laughs> i mean it's just where the world's kind of caving in on you right it feels like everything's against you it's uh, fortitude time hmm. how is entanglement different than say quagmire so quagmire to me is the, like a bunch of entanglement okay so it's more complex so. <laughs> yeah i think so yeah yeah, yeah. Connie says, hey, guys, Cheesehead here. So she is there. So Cheesehead, watch out. Uh, seems like Saturday night, those uh, Bucky Badgers are playing the uh, Brutus Buckeyes of Ohio State. Mm, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, then. Okay, so um, synonyms. Did you even look up any synonyms? No, us? I went Aww. into... I. <laughs> So, like I they said, they did those near words again. They have near words where they use anything that's like Q U. Yeah, quagmire. Crazy. When I say quagmire, it feels more uh, cerebral where you have there's lots of different things going on. You're trying to figure out what solutions to come up with with all these different ways ways that are stopping you from doing the things you're doing. So, yeah, the physical is that I think it's bogs, right? People just got bogged down in wet. Like yeah. bog yeah. stuff, yeah. a marsh, like a, an yeah. area yeah. of miry or boggy ground. That must have been before yeah. the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whose but, surface uh, yields under the tread. However, all. quagmires exist like for all of us, right? We all have those, you know, biggest challenges uh, that are that can be quagmires. Hmm. And usually you have to, to wait before taking motion taking any action when you're in a quagmire well, right. you do, usually, so it's usually you've made two or three wrong decisions right <laughs> yeah. you're in a quagmire because you didn't help yourself yeah <laughs> i agree so other words for quagmire being synonyms predicament dilemma quandary a scrape or a jam how hmm. about that weak weak <laughs> i don't think they get to the urgency of it Right, mm -hmm. the quick. Those are fluffy words, fluffy yeah, adjectives. Find some better ones think? for us. Something like dire. Uh, I suppose. Well, it was first recorded in 1570 to 1580. So, what is it? 1570 or 1580? They say dash. 80. So it must. So have they been, don't know. It must have been before the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so here's their words nearby, and I don't even understand what a nearby word is. Right. Is it like in the, in the alphabet nearby? Is that what they're trying to say? Because so it's think like with meaning, quaff, meaning it's quag, the Latin chain, quaga, labyrinth words, Latin word. Quaggy. I don't even know what quaggy means. Ooh, I want to. Quay hog. Oh, I like that one. Quay hog. I want to be a quay hog. I've never heard of quay hog. I like quay hog. Q U A H O G. Quach. I wonder what it means. Quail. I know what a quail is. Thankfully. Well, we have a couple <laughs> of those, right? Word. <laughs> Quails about, associated with quagmire? Well, it's they're the near words. Whatever the words nearby. So, Are they like down the corner, down the street, next door? What the heck is that? Who's ever seen Doesn't a quail in a quagmire? Well, labyrinth is here. Maze is another one. Oh, that's it a good kind one. Kind of makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So to answer Connie's question, Connie is asking, is Joe Black uh lenore's son and yes. Uh, yes that is true oh man you can't hide anymore <laughs> you're out in the open now and it's she okay. says that he looks similar to her brother tom 
So there you go. All right. So you look like Tom. How about that? I know he's not. What? We can be seen? (laughs) Go figure, huh? How about that? All right. So what do you guys know about the Constitution besides that it's Constitution Week? Help me out here. Give me some feedback. What would what would you think we should be doing for Constitution Week? What what well, celebration should we have? What should we be what should be happening? Well, the something that you mentioned with uh, whether you change it or not change it or add to it, it is a different time that we're in as opposed to way back when they wrote the Constitution. So you do have to accommodate certain things. So I don't know if you want to change it totally, but you do have to accommodate the new things coming up in society. But that's what amendments are for. Yes. yes. So all we have to do is amend. Yeah. Those should they have the some... basics are the same, though. The Bill of Rights, you know, those are there. That's. I mean, I'm not a Philadelphia guy, so I've never really been there or anything. But don't they have a room where they signed the Declaration of Independence? Yeah. Didn't, couldn't they do some kind of... They actually thing did around that. Yes, yeah. I know. I've never seen it. They, on film they or did have a celebration there, and that was the document that apparently is still on my printer. And I was going to share that information with you, but obviously I can't do that now since it's I can't like X-ray vision. You know, and the, the original Declaration of Independence used to go on display or on tour around museums and so stuff. So you think the Constitution should as well? Why not? <laughs> I don't see any reason why not. I think well, it's to me, it's we need to make things. So there's so much misinformation and people know so like half truths, right? About everything, myself included. Education's all good. I, I think, you know, history education seems like we don't get enough. Well, and I think one of the things that would be interesting is if you took the state constitutions to compare to yeah. the Constitution of the United States and see how much of that is incorporated into your own state's constitution. Um, a lot of the election integrity groups have been delving into the state constitutions. And I'll be honest, most people don't have a clue what's in their constitution. You know, some don't have a clue what's in the United States Constitution. So I think all this election integrity stuff has actually been beneficial because we're all learning things that we probably would never have learned. And even at my old age, I'm learning. So I think that's one of the like providences or right words we've used in the past about our government. It seems like things are timely, right? We have unintended consequences that reveal. Right. And some of them are good because despite the fact that it's a tough time, look at how educated everyone is becoming. You hear people all the time, we the people, you're our servants. We don't serve you, you serve us. I mean, you didn't hear that before. And it's true, but you didn't hear it. And now you got all these government officials going, yes, yes, we serve you. Yeah. <laughs> well, what is the core of the constitution? What is it? What is, if you could take the full impact of what it is, what is it to you? And after this break, I'm going to answer that because I don't have enough time. <laughs> all right. We will be right back. The Delta and Bonanza saloons in Virginia City are simply elegant. Imagine ascending the grand staircase and being surrounded by the Victorian elegance and grandeur of the historic banquet rooms. Original crystal chandeliers, mahogany bars, and oak dance floors highlight the eloquently appointed spaces, a truly romantic and unique setting for your wedding, banquets, or holiday parties. Detailed ceremony and menu planning ensures your special event is a memorable occasion. With just one call to Jesse at 775-847-0789, all of your arrangements will be handled by their experienced staff with your every expectation in mind including cakes flowers photography videography music and party amenities complete ceremony and reception packages are available as well as their famous themed weddings since 1865 the delta and bonanza saloons guests have come from every state in the union now it's your turn no event is too large or too small let the delta and bonanza saloons plan your next incredible event call jesse at 775-847-0789 Beach and Sons Mechanical. Complete air conditioning service, repair, maintenance, and installations. Most all makes and models serviced, including many split systems. Beach and Sons Residential and Commercial, bringing quality air to your family. Call 775 737 0055 737 0055. Beach and Sons, family owned and operated, American made. 
Peach and Sons, stay cool. Did you realize that radio advertising doesn't cost? It pays. America Matters Media has an opening for a person who would like to represent our sales department on a full or part-time commission basis. Prior sales experience, preferable. So, if you have good presentation, negotiation, organization, and communication skills, America Matters wants to talk to you. Contact Eddie Floyd, 775-384-4444. Do it today. Hi, I'm Noreen Leary, CEO of the Veterans Guest House. Guest House is a home away from home for our veterans and their families who travel to Reno for medical care. Our house is more than just a warm bed. It's a place of camaraderie where veterans can find support and long-lasting friends. We serve veterans, men and women, young and old, Navy, Army, Marines, Coast Guard, and Air Force. Wherever they hail from and whatever their circumstance, the Veterans Guest House is ready to support them. The reason we feel so strongly about our mission is that we know that many veterans would forgo their medical treatments because they simply can't afford the accommodations. The Guest House is one of a kind in the country, funded entirely through private donations. Want to know how you can help? There are many ways you can be involved, from volunteering, providing dinners, or supplying items from our wish list. Find out more about the Guest House at www.veteransguesthouse.org. Serving veterans today, tomorrow, and for years to come. To join the conversation, call 844-790-TALK. That's 844-790-8255. Now back to the show. Welcome back. This is What's the Story? I'm Janice Hermson, your host. And we have been talking about Constitution Week, the Constitution. And the question that was asked of me was, what do I, you know, maybe you should repeat it so that I, I answer it correctly. I know what my answer is more than I know the question. What, what is the core of the Constitution? What does it mean to have Constitution or okay. a Constitution? Okay. So for me, the Constitution is the basic principles. It's the foundation. That's, that's how I view the Constitution. So it provides us with our the Bill of Rights, which are God-given rights, not given by the government. We created the government. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all those basic principles. And my frustration is that we don't teach that in schools anymore. Mm -hmm. And so when you hear uh, the government officials talking, oftentimes you'll hear, oh, well, it's a, what do they call it? A, a moving document or a living document, a living document. And I, I tend to reject that, but then I think, no, it's true. It really is a living document because it can be changed, but not the basics of it. Yeah, it's those, one of those basics. Galapagos turtles, right? <laughs> it's not the slow change. Well, over but, time. It, but the basics aren't going to change. You've got your basic rights that are there that are God given rights. So you're not changing your rights. Now, what the, the rest of the amendments say and such, that can be adjusted, added, whatever, for time. I get that. But the basic rights are the basic rights. And it, it seems to me, and I don't know this for a fact, but it seems to me that often the, the, the left tends to want to take those away. And you can't take away what you didn't give. So I even challenge somebody who's a conservative who says they're taking my rights. They can't take your rights. You can give them up, yeah. but they can't take them. You do have so to exercise them. You do. Yeah. So, and again, that's where I feel that all this stuff about election integrity has been very beneficial because people are starting to understand that now. And they're starting to say, hold on, you know, uh, we, you can't take that from me. You know, I didn't get, you know, you didn't give it to me. You can't take it. And I'm not allowing you to to have it. So, you know, that's still my right. Now, you have to suffer the consequences of that, too, because if those people exert power that you can't stop, then obviously, you know, you're going to you're going to have to deal with that. But so that would does that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, I, I, foundation is is an interesting way of saying it. I, I look at the Constitution as more of the spine of the body and you get. No, from, I don't look at it that way. So, at all. yeah, I so look at it as more when you say base, foundation, what do you mean? A solid like, base, a solid um, base to draw from. So, like if I'm standing on the ground, I, you know, I'm, I'm 
solid on that ground. Mm -hmm. And that gives me that foundation that then I can, you know, move, grow, do from there. Different than your the, the analogy. Yeah. So yeah. The challenge comes from a whole, in my opinion, groups of people trying to tell others what to do. Right. It's as simple as that. Right. I mean, to me, and I'll get in that right left thing. Yeah. Um, the right is more about states' rights, closer to the people, yeah. I think. And I think that's appropriate. Right. On the federal government, they don't want right people to vote. Whatever. They just want that rule because they want it. Right. I think they want to dictate to others, not. Right. I, there's just this whole best but I, think I can tell people are shoving things down the my The difference throat. between Democrats and Republicans, if you want to go there, it yeah. has always been the Democrats have always felt that they knew better. I mean, I remember when I was 18 years old and just first started voting, I remember thinking I was a Democrat and I was like, wow, but they want to tell me what to do. I don't want people telling me what to do. I just figured this out for myself. I'm, I'm out of here. Right. And I still was a Democrat, but it, it felt funny to me. It felt odd to, to have that sense. But I'll be honest with you. I looked at the Republicans and I said, they don't give a darn about anybody. I don't want to be them either. So where am I? And at that time, independent was not really a thing. So you sort of chose, right. You made, made a decision, but yeah, I, I don't think either one of them was good at any point in time. <laughs> yeah, I do lean on to the left. I mean, it, no. It, yes. Yeah, and <laughs> go figure. <laughs> and when I hear people talking about the left, I don't necessarily feel that that's accurate. So it, it's just not accurate when I hear people talking about the left. Uh, it's. Do you think what I said sounded accurate as far as my perception of that? Yeah, and that was too. an 18 year old. Me too, right? You know, Bring it on. 18 year old viewpoint, but it's not much different now. I, I still feel that way. Well, what, how do you categorize a, a person who is liberal? How do you? I don't, because every liberal is different. Everybody has their own. There's, you know, really super progressive liberals, there's moderate liberals. They're independent liberals, as far as I'm concerned, that they're liberal on certain issues, but they're not like 100 yeah, exactly. percent. And I feel the same way about conservatives, because I know a lot of conservatives now, especially with working on elections, you know, you know, probably more conservatives than liberals. But I'll, I'll be honest with you. I know both. And they are all kind of similar when it comes to that topic. Well, I mean, the way I look at conservative you got to conserve the things that brought us up and that's the idea of how i see conservative and then pro progressives i mean it seems like progress you want to support progress if you just take those two things it makes sense to do that so those premises though aren't seen but those aren't what no you one see at looks all. At, no. Oh, no i think the conservative is way wrong right i mean for instance we're for more police right less crime less homeless I would say the left is for reduced police and okay with homeless. Uh, I mean, those are general things. I'm talking about people in general, but conservatives generally line up on one side. And that's side. based on the, the laws that are being passed, not so right. much on how but somebody feels. The left is not saying not less police has, as how I see it. it. They're saying the power that or the way in which power is distributed from police is the problem. So the problem then is the cities or the counties that give that power, well, right? Not, not anyone else. It's the cities, right? Like in many of these big cities now with crime and with stuff, right? They used to have white mayors and stuff, and now they don't. They have different mayors and different police chiefs, and we've gotten more diverse, but they still have those challenges. They haven't been able to get through and solve them. And to me, it's tighten it up, throw people in jail, be a little more conservative and let businesses not get robbed every other day. Yeah. Let 100 <laughs> people not get shot in a weekend. That stuff is just perpetual and no one gives a hoot. Well, it's the types of people that they have to attract to be in on as being a police officer. I mean, it, it's the types of people that are attracted to that. And then they get into that position of power and how they manage that power is where the problem comes. But from. that also comes from the top. That's the training and the enforcement yeah. of that training. And the so laws. it's a bigger problem. Right. Than and just, the laws. Yeah. In and that the laws. Area. 
Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's so complex that it's hard to, I, to just say it's right or left. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's, it's really neither. And I don't think putting people in jail is necessarily the right thing because they get worse when they go into jail than when they come out. I mean, a lot of that happens. So I'm rather they're in there than shooting somebody. And best I can tell, that's the ob- – I mean, give me another – we're talking about monkeypox being an emergency and one person dying, <laughs> right? I mean, these cities have upwards of thousands every year, and no one gives a hoot. Yeah, it's a great Chicago. name, though, Moxie, <laughs> Monkey Monkey Pox. Pox. That's great. <laughs> yeah, well, but right, Chicago, I, but I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> Chicago that, has so many shootings every single I mean, it's just intolerable. Know, it should Detroit. be intolerable for everybody. Yeah, in Detroit, and they never talk about I know. the, the, yep. the things that are happening L.A., there. San Francisco, oh, yeah. same thing. Yeah. I mean, you're because homeless. it doesn't sell, though. I mean, uh, the reason things... <laughs> well, you know, that, well, right. You know, so we want real, real news, though. Who cares about... Why We're not an entertainment show. We are, but the you know mass media isn't. I just want news, right? And it's all painted, colored, and shaped a certain way. Well, that's why I think that shows like this ought to be not just entertainment because that isn't being filled in the mainstream media. Totally agree. Yeah, and we do we do some of that as well, but we try and be a bit variety to kind of you know mix it well, up. Where's the bit. ticker tape? I need to read the AP <laughs> press line, right? <laughs> we cover some some solid topics. Yeah, but on an overall basis, I I would say that that we couldn't be considered. I really think the way you look at conservatives is really interesting <laughs> and progressive because mm, I don't tear those words apart and. I, yeah, I didn't know what did. not. Well, the meaning of the words get lost. Yeah, in but the meanings of the words are put on your labeling stuff, and I think they're wrong. That's what, all. what do you mean by that? You're saying you're going to the root of yeah, the word and progressive, course. but it's just a label for that push, just like the Inflation Can Reduction I make an Act. Can I give you an example? Yeah, yeah. that's a similar one. The Medicare, I'm going to have a lot of people get mad at me. Medicare Advantage. There is absolutely no advantage to Medicare Advantage. Right. They purposefully put that label on it to, to trick the people who are right. buying this thing because they really think it's an advantage. And when you first get it, it is. And then you get sick. And it's like having an HMO instead of having a PPO. And and your Advantage plan is an HMO, and you're not getting what you need. Yeah. You're getting what they tell you you're going to get, and that's it. If you have the PPO, you'd have some chance, and that's not the Advantage plan. So now all the hate mail, Janice at LRP. Or Ed, or Ed. But you the know, same, so I've, the word I've experienced it. The word and the label <laughs> has nothing to do with the actions. Right. But we have to get back to the root. And that's how you reach well, yeah, some but people. But you don't that aren't get re- to the root by going to a word that's a label that's not related. Well, you go to the root of the word to show what it means so people can access it in a different way. Oh, on that note, look at that. That was timing. And she's got her backbone back. So there you have it. Susie All right. always has. <laughs> Susie does, yes. All right. We'll be right back. Slice the sandwiches every day. Made right before your eyes, the port of Subway. Could be a spoken number five or a classic number eight. Or maybe an Italian is your number one fave. Whatever you crave, prepare to fall in love. Slice fresh sandwiches, port of Subs. Port of Subs is celebrating 50 years as your neighborhood sandwich shop. We're saying mahalo to our customers with a chance to win a dream vacation to Maui for four. Imagine spending a week lounging on sun-drenched beaches and falling asleep to the sound of rolling waves. Entering is easy. Visit portofsubs.com to enter to win Port of Subs' 50th anniversary getaway and join our Port Perks program for fun and delicious ways to earn extra entries. Aloha. No purchase necessary. Whatever your number, the dream and love, slice at a proper fit footwear in the reno town mall we've been accomplishing happy feet for over 30 years we offer a various range of shoe styles and sizes for both men and women from all season shoes and orthotics to work boots and safety shoes our professional and reliable staff possesses the knowledge to help you find the proper shoes to fit your needs hard to fit hard to find A proper foot footwear is here to give our customers happy feet. 
we make people aware of potential foot problems as we're sizing their feet, suggesting the right art support and gutting them to the proper shoes for their needs. Stop by a proper fit footwear at 4001 South Virginia Street in the Reno Town Mall today and allow the owner Mike Jones and our fabulous staff to find the perfect pair of shoes tailored to your specific needs. A proper fit footwear in the Reno Town Mall, the home of Happy Feet, where comfort and your feet meet. Charbecue the Butcher's Kitchen would like to thank every customer for your loyalty and continued support through these challenging times. Call for takeout and delivery of rib tips, brisket, ahi tuna, roasted veggies, and much more. Charbecue is open from 11 to 7, Monday through Saturday, and delivers hot food safe and healthy. Call 499-5855 for details. 499-5855, Charbecue, as featured on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Get real. Get into Charbecue Reno. Call Sarasen Dental because you're working. They can make your smile perfect. You're gonna love your new smile. Sarasen Dental for perfect smile. Sarasen Dental has a $125 special that includes a cleaning, x-rays, a free Sonicare toothbrush, and a free cosmetic makeover consultation. Sarasen Dental for perfect Call smile. Call 827 Now she's gone like a little Want to expand your advertising dollar? Sponsor this or any America Matters program by calling 775-827-8900, extension 2. Now back to the show. Welcome back. This is What's the Story. I'm Janice Hermson, and we have been having a lively discussion yeah. about <laughs> left and right, and I think it's gone very well. And I, I think it's really interesting, the perspectives that have come out of this as far as progressive versus, and I guess we didn't even talk about liberal, the word liberal as opposed to progressive. So maybe. So he's yeah, saying yeah. that he doesn't want it. Doesn't right. That, that, word. that, that word's not appropriate. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, liberal, the way I look at it is going upon moral principles. Uh, you know, moral principles, meaning what's right. And I don't think that negates the other side with being conservative because we you have to get to the roots of things when we're talking about being conservative or being uh, conserving the things that are most important so conservatives would agree with everything except that liberal means fundamental value <laughs> well what is liberal the does not mean fundamental value well, what is, let's look at the definition of liberal then let's go where's the google <laughs> So we got to look up liberal, huh? Is that what we're doing? Why not? Why not? Liberal. It'll be a party affiliation, right? Or near to conservative. Favoring <laughs> reform, open to new ideas, and tolerant of the ideas and behavior of others, not bound by traditional thinking, broad-minded. And, um, and so that's why we think it's opposite. Yeah, and it it should be just like masculine and feminine. You know, uh, oh, you're that, gonna get questions from your folks on that. <laughs> right, you go, go. So the thing is, hey, is did you, you know to... there was a reading at North Ma Spanish Springs Library this weekend? Oh, yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> well, you, you have to have, if you're going to be one way, you have to have the other side to be able to balance that out, so you can actually navigate. If I'm just on one side, I'm going to be going in circles. You need that other side to be able to keep the For boat, balance. you know, to keep yourself going forward. So I'm not saying I lean that way. That doesn't mean that I don't have my, some of my values are, are rooted in the conservative world. So it's it, you need both. But if you go the way it's set up where you're either on this side or this side, it leaves little room to be able to navigate the world if you're on one side or the other. No doubt. That's why we were going for the Bupkis party, <laughs> right? We <laughs> should form the third Bupkis party and attack, right? Because you're right. Words. We got two choices. <laughs> we have limited choices. And, and, and it, the core of it is that competition. When you have competition, you're going to have people trying to win over what's right. So, but you got people, but remember, this is a U.S. government with systems that are already there and you got your, your choosing people to run them. And so the best person, right, needs to be familiar with it. 
So I'm going to I'm going to put a little wrench in this because I want to talk. I am. I'm going to put a little wrench because I want to talk about the national emergencies, which goes to power. Right. We were talking about power a little yeah. while ago. And I, I want to kind of segue to this because Biden extended the national emergency for 9-11 and um, he says the terrorist threat behind the attacks continues to menace the country, the U.S. president warned, despite the fact that the FBI apparently is saying that um, domestic terrorists are much more threatening than um, than the others. So um, but he did. He extended the 9-11 emergency. And then he also extended the national emergency for um, executive order 13848 which was signed by president trump on september 12th uh, 2018 so and i thought that was kind of interesting because you would think with the contrary feelings of the two administrations that this would not be one that he would be signing and um, it's the continuation of the national emergency over the possibility of foreign interference in U.S. elections. So I, I just found it curious that he would that he would uh, sign that. Um, so he said, while there are no, this is MSN, MSNBC, while there has been no evidence that a foreign power has altered the results of vote tabulation in any U.S. election, foreign powers have historically sought to exploit America's free and open political system. So there you go. That's what Mr. Biden said. So, so we do. Um, I mean, so right. So I what guess. does that mean? So we have he signed all the we have national emergencies happening right now. Right. I mean, these are national emergencies. What does that do? So he at least uh, said the pandemic was over. So he that did. eliminated He did. One. However. But in that hypocrisy. They give him 130, I think it's either 136 or 163 powers that he would not normally have because we're in a national emergency. And when, when the Trump, when Trump was in, he would taunt the media and say, do you know how much power I have? Do you understand how much power I have? Now, you never hear President Biden saying that, but he's got just as many powers as Trump had. And they're very interesting powers. This is the Brennan Center for Justice, a guide to emergency powers and their use. And I actually read this thing last night, and it was quite interesting, the different things that they can do with no approval from Congress. Absolutely none. So now we've given one person just by declaring a national emergency all this power. And and politics are all about power. Navigating power. Navigating power. Whatever it, you the emergencies are BS, right? Life is an emergency these days, right? Oh, yeah. We got COVID. We got wars, right? Life's life's challenging and there's stuff going on, but that doesn't mean there's an emergency in every one of those items, and that's the way we've gone. We got to get back to, hey, these are regular, you know, everyday problems that we got going on that we need to solve. They're not emergencies. Right. But they're calling them all emergencies. Well, the emergencies are giving them power to navigate right. what's going on. And the problem is we and really uh, don't know what's going on. Well, right. That's exactly right. And they thwart, cut corners. Otherwise, they wouldn't be desired yeah. or wanted. It is 136 of the 136 authorities available to the president in a national emergency, 96 of them require nothing more than a signature on the emergency declaration. So he can just sign his name. And, and if you notice, the govs done. in the states, right, had emergency powers from COVID. And it's one of the things we all fought because same thing. They had special rights, too. They were dictators. He's a dictator by law now. Yeah. So here's another little ditty I picked up. 31 of the 58 states of emergency declared under the National Emergencies Act was was passed are still in effect today. So that's a lot. Why? That's what I asked. Yeah. The average duration of a declared emergency is 9.6 years. 25 emergencies have lasted 10 years or longer. And 13 of those were declared between 2001 and 2008. The longest lasting emergency blocking Iranian government property was first declared in 1979 on the heels of the hostage crisis and has been 
uh, persistently renewed for 39 years. Well, right. And that, so anything <laughs> that's an emergency for 39 years, right, is regular business, right? It is. Yes, this is silly. We should be able to, we the people, we should the people be able to, to get say, to these people and say, no, stop it. That's WTF. Enough. But yes, there's some things enough. we just don't see that when you're in those positions. How can you trust? I don't. <laughs> I don't know. You just I, did, I, right? I, I don't trust honest, at all. I've been thwarted. I don't, I think there's ulterior motives. I mean, look at them. They all live better than I us. Do have Congress a faith, has better health care, better I do everything. have a faith that there is, that somehow we're going to get through all of this. So I, I don't necessarily trust what they're going to do because a lot of them will just want to get more power because that's what it gives them. But I do have a faith that it will work out if we continue to create bridges rather than competition. They even have one in here, and I can't find it right now. I thought I'd underlined it. That applies to World War II. I did underline it. I know I did. World War II veterans. It's like they can call them back to service. Oh, really? I was yeah. going to say, well, that that where you hijack <laughs> where you hijack a business like the baby food industry. Yep. That's World War II stuff. Yeah. Right. Or maybe World War One. Yeah. <laughs> but I couldn't believe that. Yeah, World War II. They here it is. Yep, it says certain World War II veterans who would ordinarily be exempt from selective service may be drafted. Oh my, do that you, would be ugly. Do you think, <laughs> Joe, that there any left? <laughs> that our government like is scaring folks on purpose? I think there's some that do that. I don't think as a whole that is the case. I, I think there are a lot of things we don't know. There's more things we don't know than what we do know. So for us since we don't know what's happening when you're in those positions and you're having that communication across the world and you're seeing what's coming in uh it's it, for us to say i don't like it i mean I, i'm with you as far as <laughs> not trusting but there i don't think they're all terrible people i think oh i don't think that's the but no they're doing we don't what they, no, no, no. It's, yeah. it's not about oh, i mean no. right we're not about intent we're about fact or what right. the result but is. some of those facts we're not able to so see. unintended consequences happen all the time to the left right it's ridiculous and to the right too but right i mean it's about the result, not feelings, not intention. It's about what we're doing. But a fact is not the whole truth, though. I mean, we can get it, – it's, it's – well, a, 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 well, no, no, no. Come hear me, hear on, me. man. I want to hear you talk well, your way out of that We're well, going to no, have no. to let him do that after the break, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because he isn't going to have enough time to go into that. He'll probably cover it all during the uh, <laughs> during the break. five minutes that we're off. Oh, nice. anyway, we've got we've got a news break coming up. We will be back after that for one more hour. So please stay with us. We got lots of good stuff coming up, and you got to meet Joe Black, right? Yeah. All right. We'll Joe's right good. Back. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers over and over again. Ouch! Well, by wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor or CGM, you can reduce the pain of pricking your finger. 